So this week I thought I would share a bit of a tips video on a, a useful little technique called indenting. Um, and it's from a tutorial that I've just created that only took about an hour and a half to do and it's using um, an embossing tool like what I've got in my hand here um, and also one of the clay making tools which is a wooden tool and basically what you do is you draw the hair in um, or the texture of the hair into the paper before you put any pencil on um, and it creates these indents on the paper and I'm using a hot press paper here it creates these indents that when you bring your pencil in over the top the pencil skips over the little marks that the indenting tool has created and you get marks that look like hair it can be a really really fantastic technique to use you've got to get the pressure right so it's a little bit sort of like a goldilocks pressure it's got to be not too hard and not too light um, and with this particular technique i find that more is better than less if you put too few hairs in what can happen is it can just look a little bit sporadic and not really like fur at all. Whereas if you go a little bit crazy and you get actually lots and lots and lots of these little hair like marks in, it creates a much better end result. So this is another tool that I use. This is a wooden clay making tool that I'm using to do in the in, uh, indenting. <clears throat> this has a, a softer end to it. It's still got a pointy end, but it's a little bit softer than the than the metal embossing tool that I was using. Um, again, using sort of relatively hard pressure to squash that tooth into the paper, create these fur details so that when I start to bring the pencils in over the top, the pencil skips over and around these indented marks and then creates the feel of fur. So once I've got all of the indents in, um, I basically brought in the, the black surrounding the eye just to make it have a little bit more form. And then you can see I'm just using the black polychromos here just to very gently bring pigment in over the top of the indented lines. And you can see how nicely it works. We're starting to get the feel of fur in there. Uh, you know, wherever I bring the pencil and it goes, it goes over one of those little, the little lines that we indented, it skips and it leaves a white space. So it's really, really great technique for creating those little hairs. It can be a little bit messy and I have to admit it's not one of my favourite techniques purely because you've got to do an awful lot of preparation beforehand. So the preparation is the, the bits that you can't really see and you don't really know how it's going to turn out until you put your pencil on it. Um, but that's the bit that I'm not, I'm a bit gung-ho. I like to get stuck in there. I like to just, you know, um, start to see it coming together a little bit more and spending time and being really careful with the indenting um, doesn't really fit with my laissez-faire attitude <laughs> really um, but saying that this worked this worked really really nicely actually with what I was trying to do and of course I had to show you the um, the kind of the finished bit where we come in and we add all of the colour. This particular eye was quite a fun one to do actually because I didn't really follow, it was green and yellow but I didn't really pick out the, the absolute correct greens and yellows and, and I had a bit of a play with this. Um, this is this is a tutorial in the academy. It's a really quick one and it's a really fun one to do. I stuck with just black polychromos for the outside, and then I brought the um, the colours in. This is the I think this is the light yellow glaze, um, and I just use a hot press paper. Drawing cat's eyes on hot press paper is quite a lot of fun actually because it's about the layering, it's about the the blending, it's about the bringing the colours in and um, you know sort of burnishing a little bit. And um, yeah, it's it's a it's quite. A fun one to do so if you fancy giving it a go you can use anything that's sharp i use the embossing tool or you can use the clay making tool um, you can even use your own fingernail if you want to um, and it works really really nicely when it comes to um, color pencil there are a few techniques that are absolutely fundamental to um i guess the success of creating uh something that looks realistic so in this video, I just wanted to kind of bring uh, the technique of layering. I'm not sure whether I'd call it a technique. I mean, it basically is the, the foundation of colour pencil is layering. It's how you mix your colours. Um, you know, if you're a if you work with 
watercolor or you work with oil paints or acrylics you would tend to sort of mix uh, colors on a palette um you know but with colored pencils it is it's more about kind of mixing on the surface um i guess it's quite it's, it's quite good when you can find a color that that almost matches the color that you're trying to uh you know create on the on the surface of the animal that you're trying to create um but it's very very rare that you're going to get a color that is the perfect match and it's very rare that using just one color um you're going to sort of be able to get the, the the richness and also the depth that you're after with this particular horse uh that i was drawing this month i found a combination of three maybe four colors were were a really really perfect match not not that i'm ever trying to match a color exactly uh, i'm more interested in the values and you can see that i've brought kind of values i've brought little dark sort of elements in and where we've got shadows and stuff in here but um you know obviously color is going to be important if you're drawing a, a realistic portrait of somebody's pet or horse or whatever um with this particular one i'm working on drafting film and i've found a combination of the luminance apricot the polychromos burnt sienna and the polychromos caput morton violet has worked really really well to get this quite vibrant bright bay color that i've got coming through in the on the top of the neck here um, and it's a question when it comes to layering it's a question of getting those colors in over the top of each other and what happens when you bring so i'm bringing the the burnt sienna in at the moment here and it goes down and it's quite a sort of um a ready brown it's a bit boring i have to say it's a bit flat with just that initial layer but then when you start to bring in some of the other colors on the top of it so the caput morton violet in or that um, that really sort of bright orangey apricot color you start to get a lovely depth and you start to get a glow in the um you know in the in the fur that you're drawing it is a very slow process um you can see here i'm all it's almost like i'm drawing every single hair I'm not. Um, what I'm trying to do is bring a little bit of the texture in there. Film is a funny surface to draw on. Um, you know, as soon as you get your pencil colour down, it sticks. You can't really blend it like you can with other pencils. Um, but um, you can add little bits in here you can see i'm adding the um the apricot in over the top of that burnt sienna and it's it's kind of making it alive it's bringing out a real richness in there i don't need to add hundreds and hundreds of layers on the film the film I, i'd probably get 20 at a push uh, you know if i needed to but if i can find a combination of colors that are going to give me that lovely rich bay color you know just using those uh, are, are going to kind of replicate that colour and, and give me a really, really lovely, realistic look. So it's finding the colours that are going to work for you. Now, I don't tend to swatch, so I don't tend to uh, um, jot all of the colours down that I'm going to use before I start drawing. I find, for me, that's quite limiting. So if I start to go through and I'll go, oh, I'm going to use this colour and this colour and this colour and this colour, I find that that is quite limiting for me and I prefer to pick the colours as I go through the actual piece. I will have an idea in mind as to the colours that I want to use. So I'll have um, almost like a, an inventory in my head. I'm going to be drawing a bay horse. What colours I'm going to use? I'll probably use Caput Morton Violet. I'll probably use Burnt Sienna. I'll probably use burnt ochre i'll probably use a bit of you know terracotta um probably a, a little bit of uh, walnut brown but what i might do once i start kind of uh, choosing those colors and putting them down on the surfaces i might end up not choosing one of those and picking something instead like i might choose an indian red for example or i might choose a venetian red which is a little bit more pinky um, you know, and, and I don't want to be limited to, uh, um, you know, a set of swatches that I've created at the beginning. I, I also find creating the swatches at the beginning, for me, it's a little bit of a waste of time, really, because I'm just going to do my own thing once I get into the drawing. So I find it, I, I, I just... I just don't I know other people do and they and that works for their techniques but for me I don't swatch I, I color mix on my page and I have that inventory of colors going through my head 
you know so when i'm looking at my, my photograph i look at the color i'm trying to represent and i have all of the pencils start floating around in my head i can then pick and choose the ones that i want to use the other thing that i've learned to do um sort of over the few years that i've been drawing is i can actually color mix in my head um, i think you get to know your colors and your pencils really really well so i know absolutely that if i bring caput morton violet in over the top of burnt sienna I'm going to get sort of like a really rich um, sort of orangey browny colour. And I also know that if I bring the uh, the apricot in over the top, I'm not going to get like a bright orange, but it's just going to really, really richen up the colours that I've got underneath it. So in this case, it's the burnt sienna and a little bit of the caput morton violet. And then a touch of the light fast flame, which is a really, really vibrant orange, which is going to give that lovely vibrancy that you're seeing coming through into the the the, the bright bay of the horse. I find working in um, in sections when I'm layering really, really helps me and my brain to kind of comprehend what it is that I'm trying to do there are many 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 different roads to Rome and you know there's no right or wrong way to do something um, this particular technique of me working in a section rather than kind of putting um, you know going through layer and layer and layer over an entire the entire subject um, this particular way of creating these layers and the, the realism and everything it just really helps me um, understand what it is that I'm trying to do I work up a section at a time to the the, the sort of like the end piece the finished product um, my brain then knows exactly what it is that I'm trying to do and then I find it easier to work through the rest of the piece so I might put you can see um, I've put sort of like quite a um, a large area of the apricot down um, and then I start to work up little by little that section so I go you know color by color I know some artists kind of go you know they'll fill the entire section then with another layer then with another layer then with another and it's it's what works for you and this particular way is is how it works for me and it's how I teach I find I'm far more confident working in this way because I'm bringing each little bit up to an end bit and it looks realistic very very quickly and I need that for my a peace of mind and my confidence I need to sort of see something you know looking looking quite pretty quite quickly um, you know so I'll try and avoid any prolonged areas of ugliness if that makes sense you know we all go through the ugly stage but I'll try and avoid it lasting too long um, which is why I kind of use this technique so if you're new to pencils um, you know the, the layering is is crucial um, you know particularly when you're creating realism because you're building up all of that lovely depth and you're 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 also bringing in sort of like the values and stuff like that in there um, the other really crucial bit about the layering is that you use your pencil in the right direction. So in this case, it's in the direction that the horse's hair is growing. That is absolutely vital for realism because it it, it helps to create the form, um, you know, and it shows what's sort of going on underneath the, um, the hair and, and the skin, basically. So this week, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, a technique that I use um, all of the time, um, subtraction technique that I use predominantly, I guess, on drafting film. Um, and this is where you put your pigment in and then you use something like an eraser or a craft knife or a slice tool um, to lift out that pigment so that you create uh, shapes, texture, highlights, that type of thing. Um, so this is my latest tutorial, this little um, baby hair, this leveret. And as you can see, I'm working on drafting film. Um, I've put all the pigment in on the top of the head and I'm now starting to bring in texture and highlights, a um, little bit of shaping into that fur. So it actually looks like fur, um, you know, um, and what I tend to do with a piece like this is I'll try to ignore the detail um, in the fur as much as I possibly can um, and get all of the values and the tones and the color and everything in first and then come in over the top and create all of that that lovely detail in there and I'll use a combination of the Tombow which is the little eraser that you can see here and the slice tool the Tombow I love 
it's like just using a white pencil basically and you just come in and it creates these lovely sort of soft highlights i use a i've just used a blusher brush just to wipe away the um you know the the, the pencil dust that, that accumulates and what you'll find is the more you use the tombow it picks up the pigment on the end of it and i have just like a little um piece of sandpaper on my desk next to me and I just rub the end on that every now and again it takes lifts off all of the pigment so you're not kind of just transferring it back onto the film um, you know which is um, another really great tip actually once I've added sort of a few bits of the um, the Tombow, which gives you that much softer look I'll then start to bring in the slice tool so this um, is the manual uh, pen cutter it's the one with the orange button so it the blade stays out um, I tend to put it upside down in my hand because I'm right handed upside down in my hand turn around to the left a little bit um, and I use the edge of the blade just to sort of carve out and scrape out some of the uh, the more prominent highlights um, and it's a really really fantastic way of getting all of this gorgeous gorgeous texture and detail into a, a piece like this um, you can see you've got you've got really good control over it um, you know and you can make sort of softish marks and you can make harder marks um combine that with the tombow and you can get a really really lovely effect now one of the things that i see people or, or one of the questions that people ask me um about a lot is you know how on earth do you get the slice tool to work and i think what happens is people tend to use it in a cutting fashion so you'll use it as if it's a knife and you'll use the very very end of it whereas you can see i'm actually using it upside down um, and I'm using the edge of the slice tool, which is a little bit chiseled, um, you know, just to sort of gently scrape away the pigment. Um, and for a piece like this, for hair like this, it's fantastic. Uh, what happens is you scrape the pigment away, but it also leaves a little tiny bit of an indentation on the top of the film. So it means that when you start to bring pencil back in over the top, it skips out. It skips the where the um, where the slice mark is. So you can see here where I'm starting to bring this um, walnut brown polychromos in now in between these slice marks a little a little later on um, you can really really start to get the feeling of depth in the fur um, you know you can it looks like there's fur sitting over the top of layered over the top of um, you know the fur that's underneath it. So when I teach I teach how to create something as simply as possible for it to look really really realistic um but it to be as simple as possible and you know sometimes when you look at a piece like this you think oh my goodness this is impossible i can i couldn't ever do anything like that but it's about looking beneath the details it's about looking beyond the details if you like um you know and learning processes that really really help um you know and it doesn't mean that you have to uh, be amazing at drawing or anything like that it's all about um, understanding how the fur works and understanding how your pencils are work so you're going to be able to get that effect.